uh, why we are here and where we stand. Um, first of all, we will record this meeting. So if somebody doesn't want to appear, please uh, switch off your camera. Please switch off your microphones uh, in order uh, to have a smooth meeting. And uh, if you have any question, you can raise your hand or uh, write it in the chat. And we will answer to it uh, uh, during the, uh, the presentation. So, while we are here, uh, we are still uh, within the ongoing call, the uh, first call of the Inter-EUMED program. Uh, on the governor's priority, and we have had a series of different uh, technical meetings, and this is the fourth one in in the. Um, this is next slide. Next slide. And uh, this is the fourth one in. Uh, so we had one on the partnership, one on the intervention logic work plan and indicators, one on the eligibility of expenditure and the budget, and now we are on the carbon footprint uh, mandatory activity. Then we will have a last one in, on the 17th of May for any open question you might have before the submission of your proposal. Let's uh, remind, if you have not seen it on uh, all our news sites and uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc., um, that we have postponed the submission deadline to the 1st of June. However, we have uh, to remind also that the submission deadline depends on the approval of the program by the European Commission and um, the setting up and approval of all the uh, call documents by the program committee. Since the uh, program has not yet been approved by the Commission, but we are in a good way for it, we hope that this will be possible by the uh, 1st of June. However, there is a possibility that this will be postponed again, but we will inform you accordingly. Uh, but we are really positive uh, in, in, and, and we think that we can reach this deadline for the moment. Also, what other news uh, we have to share with you? The program manual has been updated and published yesterday with new sections, and specifically with all the sections uh, linked to the types of activities. So we uh, invite you to um, to have a look at it. And also, uh, some of you were uh, also present um, on the 26th of April. We had a meeting organized in collaboration with the Union for the Mediterranean and the West Med Initiative uh, on how to get involved in the Euromed um, program. And this was uh, specifically targeted to Southern and Eastern Mediterranean countries. So it's uh, in order to see how they can also participate as associated partners, not only, but all the roles they can have in the program and mainly uh, to be associated partners in our projects. So this means also that we have invited them to use our forum in order to uh, get uh, to, 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 to network and uh, maybe to uh, get in contact with potential applicants in order to, to, to participate in the ongoing uh, uh, proposals that are being drafted. Uh, if you uh, wish to involve uh, partners, associated partners from the uh, southern and eastern Mediterranean, of course you can also contact us and get in contact with the UFM and the Western Initiative so that we can uh, uh, put you in contact with interested uh, partners. So, what's on the agenda for today? We will first present uh, the approach. Uh, the general approach regarding the carbon footprint and why we decided to include such a mandatory activity in our projects. And then we will see how this can be effectively done and what we expect from the projects. Um, we also remind you that there is a frequently asked question uh, section on our website. 
and that you ought to register online on our forum to share information with other potential partners. Um, for any answer you will not find in the FAQ section uh, by now, of course, you should use this online form to ask any new question. So now I think that Francesca will uh, start on how to reduce the, on, on the general approach and propose uh, and, and how to reduce the project carbon footprint by design. So thank you, Sophie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this technical meeting. Uh, as mentioned, we today we will discuss about on um, the carbon footprint uh, topic, and we would like to start to give you an, an, um, an explanation of how we have uh, and why we have decided to go towards uh, a new approach in this programming period. And um, mainly uh, we start from uh, the previous programming period with uh, uh, an approach that was more uh, su the support to puntual initiatives. So it was a support of uh, Initiative, individual initiatives. First of all, we have decided to, uh, to give the possibility um, of eligibility of cost link to the compensation of air travel. And then, thanks to the, uh, to the an initiative promoted by our thematic communities, um, we had these guidelines for sustainable events within Interagmed community. It was an initiative promoted by the thematic communities that had been presented during a meeting in 2018 and had been adopted also by the program and included in the terms of references as key documents and recommendations for all the projects approved under the Interagmed program. So during the, the previous programming period, we have adopted this, uh, in, uh, these actions, let's say, but was more um, like recommendation that uh, uh, mandatory activities. Um, in, the, in this period, so 2021-2027, in the frame of the Interag Euromed program, we would like to promote a more systematic measures, more systematic approach to reduce carbon emissions. And in this sense, uh, also to be in line with the objective of the new program that is addressed and intends to support the, um, the uh, more climate uh, neutral and resilient society. And in this sense, we would like to, um, to promote a, a same methodology of calculation for all the projects approved under the new programming period, uh, a tool, a common tool for the monitoring and the calculation of carbon emissions, but also some uh, viable compensation actions. So the idea is to have a common framework common to all the projects and mandatory. And this is also to be in line with the Green Deal principles and the uh, Sustainable Development Goals further than other important uh, strategies of European commissions, but also in line with the, the national uh, strategies on sustainable development. And in order to apply this new approach, we have last year approved two projects um, zero CO2 MED and we care MED projects that are now ongoing. These two projects will run, will run until end of September of this year. Um, and we, we have asked to this project to uh, an extension of three months in order to validate their methodology and their tool. And this, this is under, will be uh, approved by our com monitoring committee. And these two projects, based on the first results, because they have already provided us uh, at the end of last year, the first draft of methodology and the first draft of tool, we have uh, identified and defined some general rules that will be applied in, this, in, this, in the next years. And that's to be applied by all the projects. So, first of all, the reduction uh, of carbon emissions from the design phase of the project. 
Then uh, to include in uh, one activity to calculate the carbon footprint uh, in all uh, the approved projects. And uh, when uh, feasible, we will see uh, why we said how, when feasible um, to compensate the carbon emissions uh, having during the implementation of the project. Uh, and these activities uh, are also included, uh, if you want to uh, have, have a look on it, on it in the uh, chapter of designing your uh, project uh, in the program manual. Uh, the idea, uh, we would like really to, um, to stress the importance uh, to have a sustainable uh, approach uh, by the design of the project. So not only taking into account uh, the environmental aspect, because sustainability um, is a more um, behind sustainability, there is more holistic approach. So you have to take into account also the social aspects, economic and also a good governance. What, what we mean, so social aspects, you have to take uh, into account the respect of uh, uh, working conditions, the health and safety of uh, citizens, of workers, but also human rights, um, but also personal, uh, safe personal data management. Uh, during the event, uh, give accessibility also to people with, with disability, promotion of interculturality. So really take in mind also the social dimension of the, the sustainability. Uh, or together with this also the economic aspects. So uh, push, promote best practices going towards a circular economy, uh, maximize the impact of local economy when you organize an event. We will go anyway um, further to um, we we'll give you some uh, concrete examples on that. Uh, and promotion of local uh, attraction, for example, when you organize an event and uh, um, take into account the cost efficiency and sustainability of the event. And another important dimension will be the, the governance. So transparency in your uh, in your team when you um, will organize your event, but also communicate uh, in a way, in a sustainable way, uh, ethical va values and principles. Also, further than the um, involvement of engagement of stakeholders. So sustainability really has to be this integrated approach from the design of, uh, of your project. Uh, we have um, we have so um, an annex uh, in the program manual, an annex that is um, a recommendation for green events that is included in the chapter designing project activities of the program manual. And here you have some concrete examples. You can this is useful for you uh, now in this phase that you are planning your project but also will be useful in, in all the period of implementation of your project. There are some examples, for example, on communication, when you have to publish your products. Of course, it's, it's, it will be better to avoid publications, but more uh, disseminate electronically, uh, to have a co-friendly version, less colors, less size, let's say, um, really to, to be more eco-friendly in your approach when you produce communication materials, to consider also transportation distances, so to prefer, for example, to disseminate communication materials in paper when you have events um, close to you, for example, to avoid to send materials um, in another country, for example. Uh, and, but also in the organization of project events, consider if you can plan less meetings uh, physically and um, maybe a phone or a video conferences will be better in some cases. Um, of course, have an attention of clean public procurement procedures have to be applied uh, as possible in all the actions that you will implement, uh, also in line with national um, rules. And um, if possible, try to organize meetings back to back. For example, 
Yeah, under your mission, of course, you can have a check on the future key events that will be organized, and you can organize a meeting back to back to one key event to avoid to organize only your event alone, or maybe with other projects, for example. And encourage participants to um, to reach the the event using sustainable uh, transport. And of course. Um, Use reusable budgets, budgets uh, take into account this uh, circular economy uh, approach also. Other examples, energy consumption, use electronic devices with low energy consumption if possible and uh, turn off the all your devices when you don't use it. So this is just a um, few examples of how you can avoid and reduce and prevent carbon emissions. But also food and drinks, um, when you organize an event, um, have an attention to local and seasonal products, avoid single-use bottles and of course the use of plastic in catering but also during the meeting and provide um, the proper infrastructure, of course, for the waste management in order to ensure the, um, the recycle of them. Uh, but we would like to go a little bit further and um, push you also to communicate on sustainability. Uh, you are a project, you are a, pro a project funded by public funds, and it's important also to address key messages to final beneficiaries and sensitize them to, um, to have an environmental, uh, um, let's say, approach anyway to, uh, to the way, to, to the life, let's say, and communicate on sustainability and really sensitize the, the final beneficiary that participate to, to your um, events and to your activities. I give the floor to Nicola that will go more further on concretely how to monitor the, um, the carbon emission during the, the project implementation. Okay, <clears throat> thank you Francesca. Um, good morning from my side uh, and um, I, I wanted to first um, start by saying a big thank you to uh, our two projects We Care Med and Zero CO2 Med for helping us in, um, in um, making it happen on the behalf of the program and making it happen for the for our new projects in creating this approach and and this tool to to tackle carbon footprint and most importantly to first uh, help changing the mindset in the way we operate in in, in projects and um, it's something that's very new and uh, for us as well to have something integrated as part of the functioning of the program of the program and the projects it's something, uh, it's a new challenge, but it's very much in line and corresponds to, to helping us reaching the objectives of the new program. So um, when I say changing the mindset, um, it's, um, it, it, it's quite revealing uh, how much progress, uh, how much room for maneuver we have in terms of how we operate in a sustainable way in our projects and also in our institutions. So the, the, the project started with um, uh, a, a questionnaire, launched a questionnaire uh, a few months ago um, to the, the, the ongoing MED projects on their green practices to find out what partners and projects um, at, at project level um, are doing in terms of uh, monitoring their green practices. And um, of course, it's it's inherent to the to to the the action the action of the project to to have sustainable actions. Um, so it's not a surprise that the majority of them follow sustainable guidelines in terms of preferring online meetings instead of face to face when it was possible, or selecting environmentally friendly facilities or for catering. But it turns out that only ten percent of the interregmat projects actually um, tracked or reported the, the project related um, carbon emissions when, when traveling or when creating waste. And, um, and what's even more striking and where I think most progress can be made 
is um, at the level of the each partner, each institution involved in projects that are also uh, in uh, in a way at least half of them um, monitoring the sustainability of their meetings, of their events, or the functioning of their offices in having uh, energy saving measures. But actually very few of them have thought about it in advance, have defined sustaini uh, sustainability targets for their for their business or for their institution and actually monitor them and report them in order to impact them and, and make a change. So that's the starting point. That's realizing that even though you're part of a indirect project, which has by default this, this um, objective of creating more sustainable practices, it turns out that in our daily uh, operations, a lot can be improved. So that's why we have decided to include that in the projects directly and all projects are concerned by this action. It will be a mandatory activity and all type of projects will be concerned and all partners will be involved. Okay, um, so now we can um, talk about a little bit the, the structure, how it will effectively happen in the new projects. So the um, there will be an online tool and this is where um, the, the, the input from the projects will happen. Um, an online tool that has been designed by the, um, by the ongoing uh, carbon footprint projects in, in MED and um, they will have a, a footprint calculator whereby um, each project will enter the data related to their carbon emissions and it will uh, give some, some results on their actual, um, their actual emissions uh, in terms of the activities in the projects and also in the operation of the, their own institution. So the data will be inserted by the, the carbon footprint reference person that's appointed for the whole project. So there will be one, one role dedicated to um, this carbon footprint activity per project. But the data will be, will be reported for each partner and uh, each of these um, carbon footprint monitoring actions will be related to uh, activities uh, of your, your application form, of your, of, of your work in the, in the project. Then once you have calculated your, your footprint, um, the, the results will be displayed in the tool in terms of CO2 equivalent or hectares equivalent with the detailed analysis for each category of where the emissions uh, and were, were made. And um, with these metrics on your, your specific emissions, um, it, it will come with strategies or ideas on how to mitigate them. So um, the, the recommendations um, will, be, will be general with, in terms of guidelines on best, best practices, uh, what you can do to, to improve uh, your, your impact on, on, uh, on, on carbon emissions, but also specific actions based on the results that uh, were calculated through the tool um, that can be applied specifically uh, for, for the project. And to give you some more detail on what sort of data will be expected for you to, um, to, to input in the, in the tool, um, the idea is not to, um, it, it shouldn't require uh, advanced technical knowledge uh, to collect this data or compile this data, although we know that depend, depending on the institution you work for, it may be difficult to get uh, this information at the level of uh, the, whole, um, the whole institution, the whole organization. So these are indications of what you can provide to um, to monitor, to track the, the emissions um, that are related to the project, but um, it, it's you're, you're expected to do as best as you can and collect as much information as you can on these topics, but there's no requirement that each of them will need to be filled uh, exactly, but we strongly encourage for the benefit of um, of this exercise that uh, it's, it's done as much as possible, and in any case it will help also changing the, mind, the mindset in-house, uh, in, 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 in your institution, 
when you go and ask for these um, these information, maybe it will be the first time that these um, these information are are requested at, at the, the institution level, and it's already making drugs to to make make people wonder why we're doing this and how we can improve it. So um, the um, yeah, so the import the important part is that the data is uh, provided and reported on multiple aspects of uh, project life, so that uh, it will give a broad picture of your carbon footprint impact and pinpoint through the tool on the more specific or the more critical issues that can be addressed. Um, and that will correspond to, to the relevant emission sources where you can have the most, uh, the most impact. So, uh, for example, in terms of labor, what will be asked is the, the number of people working in the project, in what type of office, if, if it's an open space, if it's a closed office, if it's at home, uh, the average surface area, things like that. Uh, travel is the, the most obvious one um, and in the tool you should have something um, automated where you just put in the, the type of travel, if it's by air, by train, by road and the distance in kilometers or simply put the origin and destination of the travel and it will calculate the, 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 the footprint in that uh, way. Uh, same way with the accommodation. Um, what type of accommodation, for how many people, how many nights, if the, the hotel you picked has a green certificate. Uh, similarly, in terms of events, uh, with, depending on the type of rooms, uh, whether you know, it has air conditioning in the room and things that may you know, create further emissions, the size of the room, etc. Um, catering uh, or, or restaurant, um, this is where you can get really specific as well. Uh, with depending on the number of people you're catering for, what's the the meal, whether it's a full meal or, or a coffee break, uh, what's the type of food that has been served, if it's meat, if it's vegetarian, if it's organic, and also maybe an estimation of the, um, the amount of food that ha has been wasted, and um, that's, that's also a, another point of action. Communication material, anything that's been produced for the project, uh, so printing uh, of, of any kind, uh, as, as limited as it can be, but you know, we, we, you will also always do posters, roll-ups, leaflets, some goodies maybe, so these can be tracked as well. And, um, and what, what we worded under generic uh, inputs and outputs is related to the day-to-day the -day running of the office. So that may be where it might be more tricky to, to get this information because it's not specifically related to the, the project activities, but more your involvement as partner in the project. So in terms of energy consumption, electricity, heating, water, waste, uh, electronic capacity, internet usage, uh, cleaning services, and other, other materials or equipment you may use uh, for, for the project. So that's uh, to give you an, um, a broad perspective on the data that can be monitored through the tool and what be expected for each partner to provide in terms of, of data. Um, but to, to remind you that uh, through this approach, the projects will understand the, the carbon emissions associated to the implementation of the most common activities conducted within the projects and identify the key emission drivers. And the, the, the main outcome uh, of this exercise will be to follow and implement recommendations on how to reduce your carbon footprint emission. So we're, we're really aiming for the reduction, the mitigation of your carbon footprint through the monitoring. And as we know, there's another way to act on the carbon footprint. Uh, which is through compensation or offsetting. And this uh, particular type of action is, is really interesting and um, has a lot of potential to, um, to, to act directly, have a real impact on uh, the carbon emissions that, that uh, is made by projects. So just briefly, what, what is carbon offsetting? Um, it's um, the, the net reduction or the removal of greenhouse gases emissions that is made to compensate for emissions that occurred elsewhere. 
so reductions aim at reducing or avoiding emissions um, compared to a, a baseline scenario and uh, through implementing energy efficiency measures or renewable energy and removal is by absorbing or capturing emissions for example through uh, reforestation projects so why why do we offset carbon emissions is an essential um, instrument to to reach the global and European um, environment objectives through the Paris Agreement, um, aiming at um, uh, lowering the, the, the global average temperature, the, the EU target of net zero by 2050, and as well as the, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Um, but these, um, this action on the, the carbon offsetting, it only concerns emissions that cannot be reduced or avoided by the organization that's producing them. It, so there's a lot of ways you can already reduce um, and, and by, by monitoring your, your emissions. This is what we, we aim for in this, uh, in this particular activity because the, the residual uh, emissions can be offset. But we will see that um, in, uh, in, in the framework of our, of our program, it might be more tricky to do that. Um, specifically because um, the um, the way organizations can can offset uh, their emission is um, through investment in in offset projects so by putting money directly into um, dedicated projects that have this um, environmental and also social benefits so we all know about the the, the famous reforestation programs that happen all over the world, uh, but they also have a really strong social benefit, uh, such as um, uh, enhancing the, the, the air or water quality or focusing on, on access to energy through renewable energy projects for local communities, for example, uh, in terms of uh, biodiversity conservation, of creating opportunities for social employment, for better access to health and education services for, for communities at risk. So um, this is why it's, it's, it's all uh, very important and very uh, promising, but as uh, we will see how this can be done in uh, interreg Euromed projects, we have some limitations and um, the, the implementation of carbon offsetting as part of the Interreg Euro Med projects, we hope that it will be able to happen during the course of the programming period and with the help of the, the tool that will be available for projects. So it's intended that the, the tool will incorporate um, compensation or offset options um, to be made available for projects on the basis of the, the amount that they have to, to compensate. Um, by selecting a relevant project to support directly from the tool and that will correspond to the, to the emissions to be re that could not be reduced, that can be compensated. Um, so it's important that first these uh, offset projects are of a, of a certain quality, uh, of a certain integrity and we see now a lot of um, offset projects and programs available for for individuals and organizations to support so often by just clicking um, something on the website when you make a purchase and some of these are are, are really good and and um, and and credible let's say and others it's difficult to know exactly what the impact is and that's why um, it's important that we use uh, specifically accredited uh, platforms um, to, to, to conduct these projects uh, in order to avoid inadequate use of resources in terms of finances and also the impact on the, on the territories. And I mean, we, call, we call that greenwashing practices, which means what well, it means that you know, it it's, looks nice on the surface, but actually it, it doesn't have the impact that people um, investing in are hoping for. So this is why with this, uh, in the context of our program, we will um, aim to support only offset projects that have been certified by specialized bodies 
responsible for issuing standards, verifications, monitoring procedures, and managing these platforms where these projects can be accredited and made available for, for access. Um, so, for example, they're called Gold Standard or Vera, and there are a few others at international levels that are level that are used by international organizations, even, even at um, European institutions. And also some um, initiatives that are being developed at national level by, by national governments. I think it's the case in the case in Spain mainly at the moment. Uh, but that leads me to my my second point is that uh, currently there are very few uh, options for offset projects in the Mediterranean. And as a cooperation program with a territorial focus, our desire is to to offset to support offset projects whose action would benefit the Mediterranean territories and the program territories. So currently, um, there are not many through these uh, recognized platforms um, because they tend to focus more on, on developing countries, on, um, on territories in, with larger areas. When you, when you talk about reforestation programs in, in Latin America, in Africa, or in, in India or in Asia. So, um, so the action can be done on the larger scale there and also they provide more direct responses to needs of local communities. Um, but as, as the, the initiatives develop and there's more and more awareness now on, on what can be done to offset carbon emissions, um, fortunately it's expected to increase in the next years. So we hope that in the course of the implementation of your, your project in the next seven years, um, there will be new opportunities uh, so that we and and US projects can diversify the, the compensation actions, the offsetting actions, so that we have a better impact on, on the carbon emissions. And also a minor point, but important point is that timing is also uh, a, a, a crucial factor because we still work on, on European funded projects and we have to respect uh, rules on eligibility of costs and the offsetting action should be selected and paid during the, the project lifetime. So that's why um, at the moment we encourage projects to mostly focus on implementing best practices to reduce your, your carbon footprint following the guidance by um, provided by the uh, applying the, the, the footprint uh, calculation tool provided by the program and that's already a, a great first step. I mean, coming back to uh, even a few months ago, um, when you know we started considering implementing that as part of the program operation, and based on the, the, the responses from the questionnaire that the, the Common Footprint projects have done, there's, there's, there's plenty of action that can be done before we think about obsessing projects, because at the moment it's difficult to do it in the Mediterranean. And also because there's plenty of action that can be done at the level of each partner. So now I think it's time to look at um, practically how um, you will integrate that in your application form in this particular call. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Yes, now we go um, through more concrete uh, um, aspect, let's say, what you have to do in order to include this uh, carbon footprint monitoring in your application form. Um, as also mentioned in one of the previous technical me uh, meeting on uh, intervention logic, you had some mandatory activities that you have to take into account in uh, your project. And this is um, related to both projects, so thematic community and also institutional dialogue. Um, you have to, um, to include under the work package uh, three coordination, this uh, activity that is, uh, can be called monitoring carbon footprint and in the annex B of uh, the, the chapter designing project activities, you have some example of also deliver deliverables that you can include and take into account during your project. As mentioned uh, by Nicola, what is important for us in this step is the, uh, mainly the, the collection of data, the calculation of project carbon footprint, 
um, and the compensation actions uh, will be uh, developed during the implementation uh, of the program, um, looking at the, at the results that we really have and uh, hoping that will be uh, more possibilities for compensate in the Mediterranean area. Um, so this is uh, one of the activity that uh, has to be included in the application form. In terms of uh, uh, staff, uh, also um, it will be important that you uh, will uh, allocate anyway one referent for this activity, the carbon footprint referent, that will be in charge on the definition of the project strategy for carbon footprint monitoring. So will be support in the in the prevention also of carbon emissions. So we'll give some advices on um, practices to, to apply in order to avoid the emissions, taking into account also some examples and guidelines provided by the two uh, projects, but also recommendations provided by the program. Um, but also we support you in the, um, in the use of the uh, methodology and uh, collection of data. It will be really important to collect uh, data from all the partners. In some cases, maybe um, public institutional public institution will be more difficult to have some data on, for example, electricity or water consumed. Uh, but in some cases, the tool will allow to have an estimation per staff. Uh, but it will be important to have the same anyway methodology to be applied by all the partners for the um, collection and the enter of the data in the tool. Um, and also, uh, the will support you also in the design of the, 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 the project uh, going towards this reduction of emissions all, um, all over the duration of the project. Um, also, uh, in any way, one, uh, we will approve the, uh, the, the tool and the methodology during the, the first kickoff, and uh, we, you, we will have any way a training on, the, on how to use the tool, how to collect the data, thanks to the support of the, uh, the Carbon Footprint project and uh, the team that is behind. Um, so, you will have any way a support uh, on that. Um, this reference can be uh, part of the lead partner team or uh, part one of the partners team and can be also a person that is in charge of another uh, activity or can be a, have another role in the, in the project. Um, now, what in terms of budget? As we have stressed today, what is important is the monitoring. So we push for the, the prevention of carbon emissions. So at this stage, you have to take into account potential additional staff needed uh, for the, this referent uh, and needed also, of course, for the collection of data. So at this stage, really, we, we, we advise you to, uh, to, have, to look at this uh, location of uh, additional staff. Um, and concerning compensation actions, as uh, explained by Nicola, um, can be forecast, if feasible, during the project implementation. So we will see all over the implementation of your project if there will be compensation actions um, validated, so certified, uh, that can be anyway um, you, um, uh, let's say, uh, paid anyway by the project, uh, you can allocate um, this type of cost under external expertise budget line. Uh, this type of uh, cost can be taken in charge from one or few partners of the project uh, because, of course, the, the impact of your um, carbon emissions, of your carbon footprint uh, is a project level, but uh, the, the compensation action can be taken in, uh, in, in charge from one uh, or, um, or some uh, partners, not all uh, has to be, have to be involved. And, the, um, of course, you have also the, the fact that you have this flexibility, so there will be this revision every two years that will allow to revise also the budget and uh, we can revise the budget uh, taking into account the compensation action during the, the project implementation. 
so these are the three, let's say, uh, main um, concrete uh, things that you have to take into account in your application form. And we would like also to remind you that there is in the, in the assessment of your project, there is in the, the evaluation grid one um, specific question that has uh, one specific score on the, uh, under the, the horizontal principles. And one of the questions is linked to this, uh, how the project has taken into account the sustainable, sustainable development. We know that you have a few words uh, to fill in in the application form uh, on that, but we really stress the importance to well describe your approach in the application form. So thank you for listening to us and now it's your time. So we give you the floor if you have some questions. Uh, there are some questions in the chat, uh, which I think, uh, at least for two of them, we have already responded with uh, Nicola and Francesca uh, presentation uh, as uh, we speak about uh, the um, compensation activities in the territories, in the Mediterranean territories, and uh, how to plan the budget. Uh, so, if you have still questions on, on that aspect, please. Uh, raise your hand. And there is a question of Juan Manuel Cid on the name of the project that has developed the online tool. Both projects, Zero uh, Zero Two uh, Med and We Care Med, have are developing uh, their tools. One of them uh, will be uh, selected by the program uh, by the uh, at the end, but we don't have it yet. Um, so we have Nicoletta Patrizio who has right uh, her hand. Please, Nicoletta. Hello, good morning. Actually, I have two questions, if possible. Of course. The first, <laughs> thank you. The first one is related on the timing. It's not clear to me how many carbon footprint assessment should we foresee in, in the application form. Let's say it should be done every six months as the normal um, reporting activities, or should we foresee once a year, once every two years? There is any specification on this or any suggestion from you on this? And the second question is related to the tool. Should we uh, already say which tool should we use during our project or should we uh, be guided by the joint secretariats? As far as I understand, there are two projects that are developing tools for the carbon footprint assessment. So projects are, um, other projects are free to choose the one they prefer or the uh, Interreg Med Joint Secretariat will choose one and all projects should be used the same. Okay, so first on the second question, uh, the program will indicate one of the tools to use for all the projects in order to ensure that we have the same methodology, the same way of calculating and that uh, data is comparable uh, and uh, that we can add uh, the data of the different projects at program level. So we will indicate uh, you when the project will be approved we will have this information, so during the lead parting seminar, we will have the possibility uh, to give this information. Uh, secondly, on the uh, timing of uh, calculating or reporting, this will be indicated also in the methodology provided with the, uh, by the project uh, for the implementation of the tool. So for the moment, we uh, don't have a specific um, information on that. It will be regularly for sure in order for you to have the possibility to assess regularly uh, your carbon footprint, but it's not linked to the reporting, uh, to the administrative reporting in any case. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have a couple of questions now related to um, the compensation actions, the, the financing of uh, the offsetting of uh, activities. So can carbon finance activities be included in this activity or is it strictly limited to 
footprint monitoring of the project. As we said, uh, we've, we would like to focus on the monitoring, but purely because at the moment, the, the options for financing activities in the Mediterranean are quite limited. So it's not strictly limited to monitoring. You can also uh, forecast and, and include uh, offsetting activities, but it will have to be done as part of the, the approach that uh, is foreseen by the program. So um, um, depending on the on on the on the options that are available at the time, um, and wouldn't it be suitable to share the cost of compensation on the whole partnership, and thus share the responsibility? Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. And of course, that's that's the whole uh, spirit, the whole idea of um, everybody contributing and uh, and taking their, their responsibility in terms of emissions. Then it's, however, it's most um, practical and possible uh, for each partner. So it might be difficult for, for certain institutions to, um, to have that sort of cost declared as part of uh, project operations. So then it's, it's more on a case by case. But yes, in the mindset, of course, um, if all can contribute um, in the emissions, they also need to contribute to the compensation. So yes, for sure. And the last one on the targets. Oh, Do you have any specific emissions reduction targets? Yeah. Well, that depends on on the on the emissions that the projects will, will make. Uh, this this the, we won't set any 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 maximum or minimum. It's uh, it's up to the project and what they can do to compensate or to 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 mitigate their, their, their emissions. Um, depending on the activities you do, and as governance projects, presumably you will organize, you know, a lot of events. A lot of there will there may be a lot of traveling involved. So um, these are easy ways that can be um, that can increase the 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 emissions. Uh, uh, but 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 yeah, I mean, there's there's no specific target. Um, and to come back to Alessandro's question as, as well, um, the, the, the carbon footprint will be calculated in the tool um, as, as a, an estimation based on the data that will be provided by the project, by each partner. And I, I presume that if um, some information is missing, um, there will be an average or an estimation that would be used to calculate the overall amount. Um, which would then be given in terms of, um, of, of CO2 equivalent or in, in comparison to hectares or kilograms, whatever is most practical to uh, then convert that to, to offsetting projects. Um, so that's, that's the idea. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see when we come to that uh, in, the, in the reality of the, what's available, how, how it will happen. But in terms of the calculation, um, as we said, it's, do as much as you can, be as more precise and detailed as possible in order to, to have the, 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 the value that's the most realistic to be compensated or to be acted on, let's say. And once again, um, good morning to all of you. Just wanted to add that, and once again, as we said throughout all the seminars that we had, uh, these projects are seven years long again, so uh, there might be involvement towards, uh, through the, the, the through these years, and we really have to demonstrate that you have the capability to take this point into account, uh, to monitor, and also to have resources to um, to find solutions uh, for the uh, offsetting offsetting activities. Um, this is what we need because you know along the way, uh, as uh, we foresee also to have some uh, uh, coordination among uh, the governance projects and the TS, there might be just also good ideas coming out of uh, of this uh, types of coordination and that we can foresee at the moment. But all this has to be uh, taken into account because we can also improve uh, over these seven years uh, and take these opportunities to uh, uh, to increase our uh, offsetting activities. Uh, but so once again, it's demonstration of the capability of of um, of managing 
this type of, uh, of activity and, and showing also some uh, demonstrating already uh, some uh, insights and, 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 uh, and ideas. Do we have other questions? No. Everything mm. is clear. <laughs> it, it may be. It may not look so clear right now, and it may look like it's another step that's complicating the action of the project. But I'll actually, but actually, it's. Um, we hope that in this way, with using a tool that will be available for projects that will be as simple and user friendly as possible. Um, you know, we need to keep that in mind that it's it's for the benefit of of the program, of the projects, of the environment in general, in order to to reach the objectives that we have as program. And this is another way that we can practically and and directly contribute to it. So it's yeah. another effort that we ask for our project. But remember that you know, in the Interreg Med and Euromed, we always try and do things. <laughs> Differently, always go to the next step, and uh, this is another way to do it. So, the, we we welcome your your support, and we look forward to your your contributions on this. And also, uh, adding something to what has been said by Nicola, we expect for the referent that will be in charge of this activity, we don't expect high competencies in the sense that the footprint carbon project that are now working on that. They have provided us really clear and easy and simple guidelines and the methodology will be really um, user friendly and not difficult to, to be applied. So don't be afraid about that. Um, and we really would like to, to see how this, uh, this new approach will be implemented by, by the, the projects. And I think that we have um, all to, to work together on, on that. Uh, but anyway, don't be afraid because we'll be really user-friendly, let's say, as a, as a, as a methodology. Uh, we have a question from Alessandro. Please, Alessandro. Um, yes, thank you. It's very um, practical, let's say, but I, I think there will be time also um, um, let's say during the implementation to think about, uh, but uh, let's say uh, you say that of course we we focus on let's say the projects will focus on monitoring the, the footprint and this is okay um, and um, then we focus on reduction measures, uh, but uh, I mean the tool contains some sort of baseline because to, to calculate, for example, if we implement a, an event in a more sustainable way to say that we have reduced the emission of the event, we need to have a baseline to say I'm reducing this emission because otherwise we only have the, let's say, unless we make a comparison among all the events, I, I don't know if there is a way to, 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 to say that we are reducing the, the potential emission. Um, and then I understood that, that, that uh, okay, my previous questions about the, the, the estimation of the offset cost uh, will be calculated uh, later. But, um, let's say just to share a, a knowledge because I learned a few days ago, I know that there is, um, there is at least one, uh, it's a UNESCO um, uh, biosphere, uh, let's say, men in the biosphere uh, reserve, that they created um, a platform for um, exchange of carbon credits. So let's say it, exactly for this uh, offsetting the credits produced by firm, mainly by, by, by let's say, industry. Um, but I mean, they have a certified uh, platform that is just, it's, it's just started, I think, one week ago. So this is just an information to share. Thanks. Yes, just, yes. The focus is first on the reducing by design. So this is the first one. Then the monitoring, and then what? Finally, we have in any case produced because we could not uh, avoid it. We will see how to compensate if we can within the program lifetime. We will see how to do it. But yes, the first focus is the reducing by design, meaning that of course we will change our habits, and this is what finally we want to, to achieve is to, with this activity, to sensitize, to, to, to sensitize and to, 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 to change the habits and the way of 
our organizations, our institutions uh, are um, implementing some activities finally, because of course we cannot be a program and projects uh, wishing to change everything on the, uh, in the Mediterranean in terms of environment protection and climate change, etc. if our practices are not changing. So this is what we want to give as a message, first of all, with this activity and and and, and impulse this uh, change of mind. So we hope that all our uh, organizations, <laughs> including our, <laughs> will uh, take this uh, message on board and that uh, with uh, these activities, we will have uh, the possibility to start the change. Okay, any other question? No, so maybe we can uh, go to the last. Uh, the, the Andalusia team. Yes, but finally, ah, yes, finally, okay. And okay, thank, setting, please. thank you. Uh, I just uh, wonder if, uh, uh, what's your recommendation about uh, this activity in terms of being supported by external expertise because it's so new and uh, I guess uh, we should be supported by someone uh, or, or you think it, it, it's realistic and possible uh, do it internally you know with our own resources because I, I don't know it's so new even for you <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no. even the methodology even the methodology is going to be clear and uh, just one pathway for all the projects, but uh, we are not environmentalists, we are not uh, most of us at least. So what do you, do you recommend? Because that's important to take into account for the budgeting uh, part of the project as well. Thank you. You can use your own resources or you can also use external expertise, uh, of course, uh, if, if needed, but for sure, it's not a full-time uh, job within the, the project. I mean, it's a, a very sh a small part mm -hmm. of, uh, of the job uh, within the projects. I would say that first, let's see uh, the methodology, let's see the tool, let's see what are the needs and, the uh, and then see how this can be implemented. Also, maybe one of your partners are more um, uh, skilled to, to do it than a, within the lead partner. It's not uh, compulsory that it's uh, part of the lead partner activity. It can be from another partner also. And of course, I'm sure also that within the, the world network of partners uh, in the governor's project, we will have some experts in, in, in the field that can uh, support all of us also in the implementation. Even associated partners, yeah, yeah, we can yeah. consider. Yeah. yeah, okay, yes. But in that case, you could not pay them for... Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, no. I know. Just, say, yeah, just, just saying thank you for your work. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, just, just to complement what Paco asked, uh, from our experience, we we um, made a pilot experience in in the organization of the Met uh, Sustainable Tourism Convention in 2019, and then we requested uh, to uh, external support because we were not a specialist in in making the calculation, and also what is important is what Nicola said, we need to contact certifying bodies to identify projects to make this offset uh, compensation. And we find this problem of uh, there were not uh, projects in the Euromed area, and then we have to compensate in, the, there were projects in Tunisia, in Morocco, but not in the North Basin of the Mediterranean. So what is important is how to identify these certifying bodies uh, to compensate. This is something that, that will be included in the tool as well, ultimately. Um, the, the intention initially is to have, as part of the tool, as maybe the last section, the last step, the, the link to the platform of these um, accredited bodies that have managing this platform for offset projects, and that Euromed projects can basically select the projects that they are interested in based on the amount of uh, 
emissions they have to compensate and um, and do it directly from the tool. So in this way, we would only limit and make sure that we are using certified projects. But yeah, but of course there will be of course the this need of uh, update the compensation actions mm -hmm. uh, because there will be always the change and we hope new one in Mediterranean. So of course there will be this necessary necessity to to update it. To update it and to include new ones as they as they come. Yeah, that's it. But for Especially that, you need to start program level. At uh, program level and, so. and also, you know, you have those international accredited bodies and also, you know, if, if governments are now developing, governments from the, the, the med area, developing some some credible action that can be considered as well, then, then that would be that would be very interesting as well. So the, we will uh, we will ensure also uh, at program level mm -hmm. to uh, get in contact with uh, the uh, the possible accreditation uh, bodies etc. Mm -hmm. and to see if we need a support mm -hmm. also at program level we will see uh, that uh, when we have everything uh, clear and and the tool uh, and the methodology. Um, so don't worry, you won't do that uh, by your own, each project individually, but we will work on that all together. So maybe also we will see at, at the level of the world, for all the projects at the end of the program, maybe. Then, mm. I mean, we will see how for the compensation, let's say that that's why we said don't focus on the compensation activities now because we have time in any case maybe it will come at the very end of the project um, or we'll see uh, and, and, and hoping that uh, we will have other compensation activities developed and projects developed uh, in, in the area so don't uh, don't be afraid on that we will see that afterwards in a few years uh, we have the time to to, to think about that and to see what uh, we have been developed since then. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you, Alessandro, mm -hmm. for the link. Um, yes, some, some national initiatives can be also mm -hmm. taken into account. It's, uh, uh, also, of course. That's, that's only the second one I'm, I'm hearing about. The, the only one I knew about was from Spain, mm -hmm. um, from, from the government. Uh, but then that's good if we have more options like this now that mm -hmm. we, can, we can add to the panel. Okay, so if we don't have any other question, uh, let's remind that we have another meeting planned, technical meeting planned on the 17th of May for uh, open question and answers. So there will be no presentation from our part in this last technical meeting, uh, but only any questions that may uh, you, you, you might have uh, when you are at the end of the, uh, <laughs> of the uh, drafting of your uh, application form. Uh, so in order to, to, to answer to any question live, and, and not by written uh, through the um, FAQ um, uh, tool. So mm -hmm. this is the meaning of this uh, last Q&A session. And also it's uh, an opportunity to exchange between the projects, uh, the, the, applica the, the potential to the applicants, and uh, yes, uh, to hear also uh, questions from uh, one applicant that can raise also an, an interest to others, etc. Okay, that's it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.